Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be big box store plant shopping at the Home Depot in Prosper, Texas. As always, please make sure you are hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel for that one hour plant shopping video daily. And as today, I am actually going to one of my favorite Home Depots to go to in the North Dallas Fort Worth area, and that is the Prosper location right off of Highway 380. And it is a sunny Sunday when I filmed this and I just wanted to go see what plants they have. This is the particular Home Depot that had a bunch of really nice alocasias in the past and just a lot of proven winter plants that I definitely want to see if they have already. I'm restocked, but you can see right here, it is spring and you can see there are plenty of Bonnie plants. Bonnie plants specializes in a lot of vegetable garden plants herbs and you can see there's just a plethora of different types of basil different types of tomato and just different types of um, vegetable plants that you can grow and then over here i just wanted to pan over here and just show you all of the other outdoor plants that they have available and now for my plant foldies if you are new to my channel i call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies and i hope that you too could become a plant foldie by following my daily content one hour plant shopping videos just make sure you are subscribing to my channel and having that notification bell on. But you can see here, look at how beautiful that dahlia is. So I've been doing a lot of videos where I'm featuring a lot of these outdoor plants. And you can see right over here, we've got some jasmine plants here on a trellis. And if you are near it, oh my gosh, that smell that is so fragrant. I love the smell of jasmine. And as you can pan over here, we've got so many other plants to look at. Um, we've got some tropical plants here. You can see there's some hibiscus. And what else do we have here? We've got some citrus plants and we've got some succulent type plants. Like I haven't ever seen um, Desert Rose really offer it at a big box store like Home Depot. But you can see here, they've got some endinium or um, Desert Rose. Look at that in the blooms are um, red and these are beautiful flowering succulent plants as well you can see there's some variegated yucca right over here and i'm just gonna walk over here and see what else they have as far as like assorted succulents i am really getting into succulents and learning more about them and this is really exciting because i'm going to show you one of my favorite type of succulents and this is called an eonium and this one is an Eo eonium emerald ice look at how beautiful that eonium is Aeonium, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, but they are beautiful succulents. I do plan on getting some Aeoniums. I was able to find an Aeonium Kiwi actually at Lowe's. So it's really nice to see that Home Depot also, you know, actually has these to offer. And you can see here's another beautiful Aeonium Emerald Ice. Look at how gorgeous that is. It's so perfect and they can actually get very large. Now with Aeoniums and other succulents, they do need a lot of sun. Bright light is best especially if you're growing them indoors you definitely need to grow them under a grow light definitely give them um, fast draining soil and you can see we've got some type of echeveria i believe that in here but look at how beautiful that purple tone is on these succulent plants and succulent plants are fairly easy to propagate as well so as i learn more about succulents i definitely will be talking more about them um but if you go to a big box store i just love the fact that like home depot you can save a lot of money because they always have different types of sales going on here and you can even see right here, there are some more mandevilla flowers and even more big box stores like Target is now starting to feature plants like mandevilla for outdoor planting. So it'll be interesting to see that. I'd love to get that on, on film as well. But you can see here, beautiful container plant with an alocasia. I'm not sure what this alocasia is, but what I do like about it is it's got that jagged leaf and it's re a really nice looking um, alocasia. And over here, we've got some Bonnie cages, some tomato cages for $19.98. And we're about to walk over into this um, Home Depot. So I will say Prosper is a fairly um, busy town that's starting to really grow. So I'm going to try not to get a bunch of people into my film. Um, I always like to try to be respectful when I am um, plant shopping. I don't ever want to just try to get people in my background. So you'll have to bear with me if some of my angles are a little bit low, just because I, I don't want to get faces. But you can see here potato vine for $3.98 by um, Vigoro plants here is another one right here i do love the neon look of this plant it reminds me of like neon pothos things like that those yellow neon plants are a thing for me i love them a lot and you can see here we've got some more bonnie plants 
and it, it does, there is a sale going on with them so if you want to grow some um, vegetables i would say bonnie plants is a good place to to get your starters as well as lantana 12.98 i love lantanas it's considered an annual but i believe it's a perennial and i have planted quite a bit of lantana in my landscape hoping that they will take off and grow and mound and get really bushy um you know i am actually based in north dallas and the thing about dallas and summers is it is ridiculously hot as in like we can go two months straight with 100 degree weather so i am looking for plants the outside that will be very heat tolerant um speaking of plants outside look at how gorgeous that um cordyline kiwi plant is we'll do a little bit more of a shot on that later but you can see here we've got acer palmatum so alongside indoor tropical plants outdoor flowering plants I love Japanese maples and Acer palmatum um, is a, another type of um, plant that I like to grow. I actually have a growing collection of maples. So for those that love maples, Japanese maples, I will also feature more of those um, type of content in my um my channel grow folds um, and i'm actually really excited that um, our channel has really grown in the last four and a half months since i've been doing this you know it is a little bit of a challenge to film videos edit them and make one hour plant content um, sometimes I'll miss a day just because I really have to recuperate and actually have some time for myself but I just can't help but actually show you guys the beauty of these plants you can see right here $109 for a um, acer palmatum blood good or a red Japanese maple look at how beautiful that is and what I love about Japanese maples is that their leaves are look they look very delicate and their natural leaf um, the way they grow is just very elegant and I'm gonna go pan over here again and show you how beautiful this cordyline plant is this is a cordyline kiwi and you can notice how there's just so many different colors going on with that plant definitely think that is one of the most gorgeous type of cordyline plants available and you can see that this place has a lot of um different types of plants like look at these succulents right here aren't these super cute in these little trucks right here um you've got a little succulent arrangement and these ones are i think for 49 dollars and then we've got some more smart plant um, succulents right here. We've got different arrangements. We've got um, just large forms of succulents. And, you know, succulents are another world of just pure plant goodness. You know, there's several different types of genres of plants. And, you know, for those that are really into succulents, I would love to learn from you. So please make sure you guys are... Um, you know sharing your, your information about succulent and cactus care i definitely want to learn from you as much as i like to share my plant insights i wouldn't ever say that i'm an expert i just really go by my experience but you can see here beautiful alocasia not sure what that alocasia is but you can see here i'm gonna walk over here and show you some ground cover plants so um these ground cover plants are absolutely stunning um i love this vinca vine by um proven winners look at that it does um it would be a good hanging um, basket plant as well and i'm trying to get the um the price to focus so that is for 6.98 by proven winners really love proven winner plants i think that they have some really good plants that um are very diverse very healthy and they just have really cost effective prices and over here i love dark foliage plants i say that in every single video and i would probably say i have over a hundred videos now of just plant shopping um, but this one is for 6.98 again by proven winners i am thinking about getting one of these uh, dark foliage plants right here this this purple plant to grow um, in a container outdoors this one would like to take full sun but eventually try to grow this indoors as another type of plant you know when you think about indoor plants or indoor house plants you always think about your tropical plants but i wouldn't mind trying to grow some of these plants or experiment growing them indoors i will say whenever you're going to grow plants that are really meant for outdoors a couple of things that you have to consider and that would be number one the lighting conditions most likely you're going to have to grow that plant under a grow light number two the ambient um, humidity because for some reason plants that are meant to really grow outdoors are a little bit more spider mite prone so that's just things to, um, to think about when growing plants that are meant to go outdoors indoors and you can see right over here this is an asparagus fern um, or a mayor ci 
for $19.98. Look at that. And whenever I touch the foliage of that asparagus fern, it's so soft and fuzzy. It's a really nice looking plant. And then we're going to go walk over here and I'm going to try to dodge people. It looks like some of the, um, the crowd has kind of disappeared. So I'll be able to try to get you some wide footage of all of the plants. But for now, I want to show you this beautiful plant right here. It's this yellow plant. So this is a Goldilocks plant um, for $6.98. Look at that. It kind of reminds me of a lemon button for button fern, but this one is also meant to be ground a ground cover. Really nice looking plant as well. And you can see here as I pan over, there's several hanging baskets of impatiens and petunias and petunias. I say this in every video, but they are the flower of the hour. Everywhere I turn, there are different colors of petunias, different hybrids. And then we also have some ornamental grass here. Look at that. And this one is for $8.98. This is lily turf. That's what it's called. And we're going to um, spin around here. And I want to show you this. So I thought this was some type of quarter line plant, but this is actually a pineapple plant so that's really cool by southern living this one's for $24.98 i like that dark foliage plant as well you know dark foliage plants i wouldn't mind trying to grow like a gothic garden or gothic um plant collection since i really um, am drawn to dark foliage plants and then I also want to show you this. So we talked about the um, variegated vinca vine. This one is just a typical vinca vine right here for $7.98. It does require full sun, but it is a vigorous grower. So if you don't want to grow like a hedra helix or English ivy or hedera he um, um, helix, you can always grow a vinca, um, vinca vine and it will do very well for you as a ground cover. These are hydrangeas for $24.98. I really love the look of hydrangeas, like just the different colors. And what's interesting about the different colors is depending on the acidity of the soil, you can really influence the coloration of hydrangeas. Now, I'm not 100% sure what type of acidity um, kind of influences it, but I've read somewhere that um, hydrangeas really can um, change their colors. It's another plant that I really wish I could grow in my landscape, but it just does not do well in such hot weather at Texas. And I want to show you this. So this is a really interesting plant. This is an um, Asian jasmine tricolor for $5.98, again, by Vigoro Plants. It's a premium perennial, so meaning that a perennial plant is a plant that will grow year after year. It'll die off in the winter, but grow back in the spring. This is another type of ground cover plant. Supposedly, it may give you some jasmine blooms, but for the most part, this plant is grown as a ground cover to get that nice variegation really nice looking plant i would assume that if you give it like a lot of sun that you'll also get some pink variegation and that's the thing i love about um plants that can get sun stress most hoyas are like that as well as succulents and cactus the more light you give it the more sun you give it the more sun stressing and interesting variegation you will get out of those plants so and then here you go it's our favorite hedra helix or our Hedera Helix English Ivy. And for those that are watching my video for the first time, I really hope I'm not scaring you in the way I pronounce Hedra Helix. That's really a running joke among um, all of the plant foldies. Um, for some reason, you guys like me saying that. And so I'm gonna continue to say it incorrectly. The correct way to say English Ivy is Hedera Helix. Now this is an Algerian Ivy. So this is definitely not a Hedera Helix. It's um. It is part of the Hedera family, but that is not a Hedra Helix. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna um, keep saying that, okay? Um, anyways, we have a bunch of hibiscus plants here. And again, hibiscus are another tropical plant that I am seeing a lot of. This one is for $24.98, so it's a really good price. And this one is the American uh, Sweetheart. Look at how beautiful that um, bloom is on a hibiscus. Now with hibiscus, they need full sun they need to be outdoors they're going to be a plant that you really won't have the best success growing indoors just because it, it it just needs a lot of light and same thing with the zora plant right here look at how beautiful the blooms are here and i just want to pan over and show you the beautiful blooms of this particular plant
what gorgeous looking blooms we have here. Those reds and yellows really are striking. And you can see over here, we've got some more tropical blooming plants, a bunch of hibiscus, mandevilla flowers, and just a plethora of different types of tropical outdoor plants. One would be the classic um, Croton Petra. And this Croton Petra doesn't have nearly as much coloration. And you can see here, something um, has eaten the leaves up. That one's for $10.98. I wouldn't definitely buy any of those Crotons because you don't know if there's a particular pest eating that. But Croton Petra, it's another, you know, with most Croton plants, I would say they just really need to be in full sun outside to just grow well and get the coloration. Here is a large um, Croton Mame love this a lot as well and you can see that the leaves are a little bit dirty it might just be the hard water that um, kind of sticks to the the plants leaves but um, I like crotons it's one of those plants that either you love it or you hate it I love it but sometimes it hates me because if you it's a finicky plant and what I mean by finicky plant is it does require a little bit more care especially when you're growing it indoors now this croton mame is for 1998 and i think what makes it difficult of, of, of a plant is it does require a lot of light if you're going to grow it indoors it also is finicky about its water it definitely doesn't want to be over watered but you also don't want to underwater it as well meaning that you don't want to neglect the watering so it's kind of similar to maybe a ficus plant if if that kind of makes sense where you need to give it enough water um, but it needs to be consistent as well as giving it a lot of light and then we're gonna walk over here and I always find this interesting I don't know who really came up with this idea about braiding plants but you can see there are a bunch of hibiscus here braided hibiscus um, trees these are trained and you can see here we've got um, a thornless blackberry that's really really nice as well what I like about blackberry um, plants is obviously the blooms are really nice and you can see that there's some berries already forming but when you touch the leaves the leaves are a fuzzy thin leaf um, I don't know a lot about blackberry plants, but I do like the look of it. And you can see here what a gorgeous um, gardenia tree. So a couple of days ago when I was plant shopping at Lowe's, I also saw some gardenia trees. This would be something I wish I could grow. But again, with gardenias, gardenias really prefer um, to be protected from the hot afternoon sun. So they would prefer uh, morning sunlight, a little bit bright indirect light. This one is for $36.98. It is the Amy gardenia tree. Really nice looking form. I, I find this really interesting. What I like about this gardenia tree is it's not a braided form. It really was just trained up like that. And, um, you know, to go back to, you know, things that plants that you can train up to become a tree, coleus plant. So that is my plant obsession. And I will talk to you guys more about it a little later if I find some coleus plants. But you can see here more plants here. These are some samba plants. I think that what that's what it's called or maybe a mandevilla flower. But you can see this is really giving you tropical vibes when it comes to these um, blooms. I really like the look of it. And you can see um, Home Depot also has a similar um, you know, cost effective white bird of paradise right here. It reminds me of the Costa Farms Island um, blooms um, series. And you can see here what an interesting cordyline. So this is a cordyline for $7.98. You can see that it's got a maroon, a deep maroon color. The leaves are a little bit um, more like it looks almost like a Dracaena marginata, if you're going to ask me, but that is considered a cordyline, and I like that a lot. And as you can see here, there's just so many tropical plants. I love looking at um, outdoor plants, and have no fear, guys, for those that are actually here for the indoor tropical plants. I will get to that in just a bit, but I also like to go feature all of these plants because it is spring and the, um, the greenhouses out in most of the big box stores are full of plants. Like, look at this isn't this fiery striking beautiful all of the you know the cool adjectives you can say for this quarter line hawaiian tea plant this is for 44.98 i'm actually tempted to buy this um plant just because i i kind of want that instant gratification i love this quarter line plant particularly because it has wider leaves and that red is just fiery and it definitely is a showstopper it's definitely a good focal point for anybody that wants to grow that outdoors 
and you can see here lots of trellis um, mandevillas we've got some more um, hibiscus plants here look at these yellow blooms and then we've got some cordyline hawaiian tea plant again now with cordyline tea plants if you give it full sun it will give you beautiful coloration and this is an example of um, croton petra that has been grown in a lot of light look at all of that coloration as well you can see that there's ferns and there's just a lot of gorgeous plants at the prosper home depot again home depot is another big box store i love to shop at because i feel like i can save on some of these plants they're a little bit more cost effective in some um, aspects like here it's for 22.98 that is a fatsa japonica or japanese aralia and here is a gorgeous oak leaf hydrania really love the look of the leaves obviously it looks like oak leaves um, and that is a hydrania so it does um, require you to have a little bit more acidic soil for it and you can see here just so many beautiful shrubs and outdoor plants that you can put in your landscape. So I'm just going to walk over here and just show you all of the different plants we have available. Lots of gardenias. We've got boxwood and we just have all sorts of other plants. But there's a particular tree that has really caught my eye and we're about to approach it here. Um, it is a variegated tree. We're going to look at this. This is a dappled um, willow tree form that is some japanese type of tree we're going to look at it more in more detail but look at that look at that variegation like the leaves are almost white it's highly variegated now this tree supposedly needs to be a um, impartial sun so that means it needs shade more most likely but this is the hakuro nashiki ha hakuro nashiki you know i would think that a place like mr maple which is a japanese um, maple um, nursery that does mail order japanese maples would offer some type of cultivar like that but it is such a cool looking plant i kind of want to buy it it's only for 89 dollars but you know there's all these plants that's the thing about plant shopping right if you are in love with plants it doesn't matter what plants it is it could be an indoor plant an outdoor plant um you know a succulent a vegetable plant just the fact that uh, we are able to look at plants and enjoy them it just really brings me a lot of joy and again i want to see if i can get this um tree what do you guys think about this particular variegated tree look at the leaves it looks like somebody just painted white on it and just splattered white i like this a lot but i am a little bit weary about this let's look at this again this is a um, willow tree form hakuro nishiki for 89 dollars i don't think that's a bad price at all and you know when you think about it i would assume that that type of um tree or that cultivar of a willow would be a little bit more slow growing so you know i might buy it look at that when the sun hits it the light hits it it just illuminates and it's just white um, I would think that it would need a little bit more bright and direct light for it to just continue to variegate. Just like with most variegated plants, they really do need a lot of light. Some variegation is actually influenced by the, the plant's original genetics. But I would say some plants also would revert back to green if it doesn't get enough um, sunlight. So that's um, something to keep in mind when it comes to variegated plants. But you can even see right here, even from afar, that that tree is literally glowing. Um, and I really like the fact that the potential of it spreading and becoming um, even more of a tree, I might have to go look for that again at another Home Depot, maybe if, I, if I'm out in McKinney or something. But you can see here, we've got a beautiful Coral Bells for $19.98. Um, and, you know, Coral Bells, what I like about the Coral Bell is that particular color, that dark purple foliage color. And you can see here, more plants. And this Home Depot is, is really stacked. Actually, a lot of the big box stores are really stacked outside. I love that a lot. And you can see here, this is some type of um, hosta plant for $7.48. This hosta plant, and what I like about hostas is just the leaf um, shape. Some of them are wider form, some of them are a little bit more narrow, but there is a nice texture on the leaves. And I also like the coloration of hostas. They are perennial, so they will grow back year after year. And you can't go to a big box store and not see Encore Azaleas. I love Encore Azaleas. It is considered the number one world um, reblooming azalea so most azaleas typically will only bloom in the spring 
but Encore Azaleas will bloom in the spring, summer, and fall. So that's super cool that it is a reblooming re Azalea. And right now for the eight inch planters, they have them on sale. Instead of paying $15.98, they are $11.98. So you already know I'm going to end up buying an Encore Azalea today because I have a little bit more... Um, confidence that I'll be able to grow azaleas. My um, actual Shang Tung maple or Asa truncatum is really growing um, and giving a lot of shade this year. So I'll be able to grow some of those azaleas underneath the tree. And what's really cool is maples like acidic um, soil as well. So that would be a good companion plant. But anyways, as we pass by all of these um, shelves, you can see we've got a bunch of impatiens. Now impatiens do require shade. And here is an interesting container of ajuga plants this one is the bronze form for 398 and it looks to be happy because it is already um, shooting out some blooms i have the variegated form um, the variegated ajuga but i also like the bronze form as well um, those would be plants that i would experiment in trying to grow indoors they are considered more ground cover and then over here we've got some asiatic lilies asiatic lilies need, need full sun and look at how beautiful the bloom is on that lily and it is also a perennial so say you do grow it in your landscape depending on your growing zone um, they are perennial so they will come back year after year so that's the thing whenever you go plant shopping or going for outdoor plant shopping you want to know your um your growing zone and then over here for instance this is a dahlia beautiful structure on those those blooms some dahlias are considered perennials but again it depends on your growing zone i am in i think growing zone um 8a and then you can see here 8a for me on um, these lantana for 998 would be a perennial it will grow back year after year and what i like about lantana is literally they can tolerate weather as hot as 100 degrees and they're drought tolerant one plant that wouldn't be as drought tolerant would definitely be this coleus plant right here um this is in a six inch um a uh, pack or six not a six pack i'm sorry of coleus plants I really like coleus plants that is my current plant obsession but as you can see here love that all of this beautiful sunlight is just hitting these plants you can see that this one is an encore azalea as well that one um i just i am definitely going to buy me some encore azaleas today this one is an autumn twist um encore azalea look at how beautiful that bloom is i'm definitely going to get that one when you think about an azalea bloom that is almost a classic azalea bloom i love azaleas because i love japanese gardens and i believe that azaleas are synonymous to a japanese garden so that's the reason why i'm a little bit more fixated on azaleas and you can see here and you never um will not see a polka dot plant featured in my videos this one is for 398 it is another plant that sometimes is um you know labeled to grow indoors but what i've been told and i've seen is that they grow better outdoors in the same thing with this proven winner's persian shield for 698 i did buy one of these and it is doing very well outside for me it is one of the most magnificent looking plants when it comes to like that purple it is just it's stunning and i'm glad that it's been doing very well for me it grows out in my front patio under some shade and hopefully i can grow it even more and maybe propagate from it and then over here we've got some more um lantana this is another yellow lantana right there by Proven Winners for $9.98. And then we're gonna pass by a lot more plants. And you can see here, just a lot of annual plants, ground cover plants, blooming plants, like this ajuga right here. This is the bronze ajuga. And you can see those shoots are actually um, blooms. And over here, I'm gonna walk over and show you guys uh, some more of these plants here. Um, I just, um, I can't get over those trees those um those um trees right here look at that isn't that just gorgeous plant foldies leave in the comments what you think about that if you're also been you know working on your outdoor garden i know that i've been heavily featuring a lot of outdoor plants in addition to my indoor tropical plants just because it is spring again and i just love the outdoors as well you can see right here this is a proven winners um plant this is a sweet caroline um, potato vine look at that this one actually isn't just the green neon color it has neon veining which is really cool and that's again you know something really nice about um, proven winners is proven winners actually has some really good hybrid plants and these this is another hybrid of theirs um i am actually interested in possibly getting a variegated version of the um 
the potato vine and maybe growing it indoors. The only thing about growing potato vines indoors is they're so susceptible to spider mites. So, you know, it's one of those things where you have to really be cautious about it. And you can see here for $7.98, We've got a beautiful coleus plant and this is what coleus plant looks like it's about to shoot out some flowers. Now you can let your coleus plant shoot out flowers but the only thing is those flowers will really stun the growth of the plant. It'll focus more energy on producing the flower and seeds versus the foliage. Um, but what a beautiful looking coleus. I love the pink. Um, I think I particularly have this plant already but it is a gorgeous looking plant and I have been doing a lot of research where people actually actually grow coleus um, into trees that they can grow indoors. I have been looking at a lot of Swedish and like European Instagram accounts that have coleus plants. They call them palette leaf plants and I definitely want to learn more about it. I might even do a coleus bonsai. So stay tuned for that. And you can see here, I love looking at these Dahlia plants by Vigoro. This one is for $9.98. I do think that you would save money buying at a big box store. I, I, I suppose if you buy in bulk, you'll save more money because they do have specials for that. But what a gorgeous looking um, a flower Dahlias are. You know, I always thought that Dahlias were um, difficult to grow, but you know, if you have the full sun to do it, they will grow well. And I also never really thought that wax begonia um, were begonia begonias that were really grown for their their blooms like look at how beautiful that red is in you know in addition in combination to the beautiful bronze color that one is for $29.98 that is not a bad price at all and this is big begonia for $9.98 um, again the leaves are really large and then also look at the beautiful pink blooms um, I definitely want to grow wax begonia indoors we'll see if I'll be able to grow them successfully indoors right now I have wax begonia growing outdoors and under shade but with wax begonias they can actually take full sun that's the thing i like about you know wax begonias is they can actually take full sun or they can grow in shade they're very versatile in their lighting conditions now these are um, impatience and they are um, considered flowers that need to grow in shade some impatience are called sun patients and they can actually grow out in full sun so it's interesting again and i mentioned this in multiple videos but the biodiversity of plants as more um, become hybridized you get better traits to where you know a plant used to be able to only grow in the shade and now it can actually grow out in full sun i'm hoping that japanese maples or acer palmatum will eventually be able to be a little bit more sun tolerant because then for people like me who live in north dallas Texas weather in the summer is just brutal. Maybe we'll be able to grow them more in our you know, outdoor landscapes. But you can see here, lots of different sales going on right now. And I wanna feature this. So this is another plant I plan to grow in a container and possibly grow indoors. This is a, um, what is this plant called? It, it's just another plant that I um, know needs full sun. So that's the thing that makes it a little bit more challenging. Because if you're going to bring this indoors, you have to provide it with a lot of light. So it's probably going to need to grow under a grow light. But look at how beautiful the leaves are. Now, this is for $4.98 or $5.98, one of the two. Um, it's interesting because if you um, you trim it back, it'll actually become more bushy. And here's an example. You can see that the very top of that um, plant was cut back. And you can see two more shoots grew. So it's kind of like a coleus plant in that sense. Um, it'd be interesting maybe. Be, um, you know, I don't know if it's in another plant that would be easy to propagate like a coleus plant. Um, yeah, this is for $5.98, but this is another plant that I want to grow for sure this year outdoors. Maybe even grow it into a tree form like a coleus plant. Love that dark um, red foliage. It's kind of bloody looking, but it's a nice looking plant as well. And you can see here, um, Kalanchoe for $5.98. You can never get tired of Kalanchoe. Kalanchoe are everywhere. Anywhere that sells plants, you'll see Kalanchoe. And then you can see here, look at these um, scarlet red begonias. Absolutely stunning. Like I, I cannot get over this. And then this for $24.98. Begonia blooms are so beautiful and I just love the fact that there is so many varieties hundreds of varieties different types of begonia and see right over here we've got vinca plants or vinca blooms those like full sun same thing with marigolds right here 
and you can see here lots of beautiful hanging baskets of like wax begonia and petunia so this particular um, Home Depot is stacked with a lot of plants and I did want to revisit this gorgeous looking cordyline tea plant this is a cordyline kiwi again what a large plant and you know that's the thing I love about cordyline is that they can actually get really large I would recommend growing them actually outdoors. The success rate of being able to grow a cordyline plant indoors is a little bit less likely unless you are really giving it the right um, conditions to grow. And now we're gonna walk in here and look at all of the indoor tropical plants. So it looks like they may have um, just kept the same plants that they have. I don't. I almost feel like they don't have like a full restock. But you know, needless to say, this Home Depot is um, still really packed with plants. Like right here, we've got some bromeliad. So this is a Bromelia Nero Neo Rig. I can't even pronounce that, but for $19.98, look at how beautiful that is. It's got some pink, purple, cream tones about it. I um, don't know all of the care tips for a um, Bromelia, but I've been told that Bromelia are really easy to grow. I may end up getting one soon if I if the right price comes around. And you can see right here another dark foliage. Um, uh, bromeliad i love this and i love this particular bromeliad just because it um it just has wider um leaves and it's just got a beautiful shape about it you definitely want to go view the um the bromeliad from top view so that that's a plant that you want to put more so lower to the ground and this one's for 1898 this one has like speckles um so that's really nice and you can see right over here they got some more bromeliads i'm gonna walk around there to show you the red one um, but let's take a look real quick. It looks like somebody changed their mind on getting a rose bush, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this up right here. What do you think about that red? Isn't it lovely? This looks like somebody might have just pa um, spray painted it. Um, it would be really interesting to see if there's people that just um, particularly um, just collect begonias. I definitely love begonias, not begonias, bromeliads, sorry, bromeliads. So you, you, you know, whenever you go plant shopping and you're constantly talking about plants, sometimes you end up just saying the wrong plant name. Those are bromeliads, sorry about that, but gorgeous looking bromeliads. Look at this one as well. This one again is for $18.98. Look at that pink, look at those stripes. Gorgeous looking plant right here. They almost remind me of like Sansevieria or snake plants, like the bird's nest form, but you can see what gorgeous coloration on it and it would just be one of those um bromeliads that would really like give you a lot of like natural or not natural but just really striking color in a houseplant collection and you can see right here many many plants so i'm just going to pan over here and show you what they've got <music> definitely seeing a lot of Hoya Cronosa here and have you ever seen this I'm gonna show you this so we've got a hosta plant for 1098 but check this out I've never seen hosta blooms look at how beautiful that is they've got some delicate white blooms and I love white flowers I always say that in every video of mine white flowers just bring a certain elegance about it and then you can also see that this is a African violet this one's not a look healthy looking African violet it looks like the blooms are about to be spent but I do love African violets. I have one that has done very well for me. Um, with African violets, you definitely want to never get their like leaves or stems wet because they will rot. You want to go um, water them from the bottom. And you can see here, we've got another Hoya Carnosa. Not sure what this Hoya Carnosa is, if it's a Crimson Princess. I think it is, it's not a Crimson Queen because I think Crimson Queen is the one with the white variegation on the edges of the leaves. And you've got just a Hoya Carnosa, just the green form right here. Um, lots of hard water stains on these um, wax, um, waxy leaves, but I love um, Hoya plants, they are gorgeous as well. And I hope to be able to get one of my Hoyas to bloom someday. I mean, these ones right here are $14.98. So if you ever want Hoya plants or wax plants, you can definitely go to a big box store like Home Depot because they will definitely have them in that form and also hanging baskets. But you can see this is a full nursery greenhouse full of tropical indoor plants. You can see here what a gorgeous and large um, staghorn fern for $14.98. 
gotta love me some staghorn fern you know it's another type of fern that i would love to um you know mount on a wooden plank and then just um mount up my wall it'd be another diy project that i would consider doing at some point you know it's all about making sure you have the time for that and you can see right here this is a dracaena steed soul for 14.98 this one has a little bit more leaf damage but dracaenas are underrated i will always say this please get yourself a dracaena it is so easy to take care of same thing with the syngonium here this one's for 14.98 really large um actually foliage for the syngonium they've got some large leaves right here i like the fact they're a little bit rounder and less like narrow I, I prefer that type of syngonium but what a nice looking silvery tone for the syngonium with shades of like dark or light brown um i really like that a lot 14.98 is not a bad price at all because that is super full and you can see here these were actually hanging baskets of syngoniums as well don't know the particular syngonium but what i do know is look at how lush and full this basket of syngonium is um i definitely would want to add that to my collection um syngoniums are one of my favorite plants to grow it used to be my number one plant but the thing about syngoniums is you definitely want to stay on top of the watering because they're not very tolerant when it comes to being underwatered meaning you have to consistently make sure you're watering them otherwise they will start to lose their leaves and really decline in health even be more susceptible to spider mites so just keep that in mind when growing syngoniums but needless to say, they are still pretty easy to grow. Same thing with Spathophyllum or Peace Lilies. These are for $14.98. And what is amazing about these Spathophyllum or Peace Lilies is they can actually get very large leaves. And for a plant that can tolerate very low light conditions, it makes it another candidate for an easy to care for plant. gotta love zz plants this is just a common green version for 19 i think 1998 um what a nice looking plant and um it's another very easy to care for plant because it can take really it can tolerate really low light conditions same thing with this dracaena lemon lime right here look at that foliage look at that neon um yellow tone on it this is another plant that I always talk about in my videos and for those that are watching this and if you're getting into like house um, plants definitely consider getting a Dracaena lemon lime it'll give you that color that you would want and it's an easy to care for plant now this right here is a Cordelan Hawaiian tea plant that red version right here this would be a challenging to plant to grow indoors now if you are going to grow this outdoors in full sun it is easy to, um, to take care of and then this is another type of Dracaena this might be a Dracaena a reiki i'm not 100 percent sure but again it is another plant that can tolerate lower light conditions and if you don't water as often it will still um, thrive a very finicky plant and i want to show you this this is an example of a diphenbachia that has not received a lot of light look at how um, the leaves start to just dissipate and um, t tear like look at that that one it just kind of like falls over um just you know diphenbachia are beautiful plants foliage wise but they require so much light that if they don't they get very leggy like that and it's just really sad to see how they they decline in health very quickly and you can see here tons of croton petras here really the croton petras need to be outside in the outdoor section because they just require so much light and you can see here even even these like ficus tanikis and um, diphenbachia these really need a lot of light as well it's a little bit darker in here but what a beautiful looking foliage diphenbachia are extremely toxic especially to pets so if you have cats dogs or any fur babies you definitely need to be cautious when putting a diphenbachia in your home um, and you can see here what a beautiful looking um, monstera deliciosa classic house plant it gets very large and then we have some tamathophyllums here so i haven't really shown a lot of tamathophyllums as of late but what a beautiful plant as well i always find it interesting that every tamathophyllum i look at at either home depot or a big box store the leaves always have hard water stains i don't know what it is about that particular plant and you can see here some alocasia california's large forms um, nice looking plant 
Um, again, alocasias are better grown outdoors. They're less finicky when grown um, outdoors versus indoors. Um, you can give them more light that way. And also you can hose them down versus trying to give them that best like humidity. But you can see here just lots of croton petras. And I actually saw a gorgeous um, croton petra tree that was at um, Archie's Greenland in Fort Worth, Texas, another local plant nursery. But it was probably 15 feet tall and just the um, the spread was also another 15 feet it was absolutely stunning and it actually had bloom so crotons are a plant that can get very large as well given time they are a little bit slower growing especially if you don't give them enough light and i did want to show you some more of these calathea plants you know these are prayer plants right here these are all by proven winners and these are for 29.98 and you can see here this was a sweet dreams exotica one what a beautiful looking one look at that it just looks like feathers and again, with this type of um, plant, either Calatheas or these Setosas right here, Nanthes. This is a Setosa Nanthe Gray Star. It's one that I actually want to put in my um, plant collection if I'm going to have a finicky plant because it just has beautiful foliage. I would convert it into hydroponics and just grow it in straight water. And I, I feel that all of my Calathea growing in just water is doing so much better than having them in soil. So um, that's how I've been growing my Calatheas. And you can see here beautiful looking um, Monstera Deliciosa leaves. This is a Hoya Wayetii for $5.98. Um, this is by Proven Winners. So Proven Winners actually has released a lot of Hoyas as well. I love the fact that, that Proven Winners has really ventured into the tropical house plants versus just doing a lot of outdoor um, plants like hybrids. They've got their own hybrids here. And you can see here, this is a Rodeo Oyster plant um, for $5.98. Now, I bought a um, much larger one, a cheaper one at um, Lowe's. They featured that as well. And you can see this is another... Um, rodeo plant this is a pink urchin rodeo so this one doesn't have the pink striping but it does have very nice um, purple underside foliage like that a lot i am collecting those as well so i have a couple of those types of plants they kind of remind me or are similar to trade scanthia and you can see here as i pan over they do have a lot of plants at home depot i just feel like this home depot like here is for 4.98 we've got a peperomia obtusifolia um, just a variegated form but like I was saying um, a couple months back when I first got here the plants were super full and um, just really healthy I'm not saying that they don't have a selection of plants but it's really interesting once you start going to big box stores and you visit them often how the plants um, remain like what their health um, conditions look like like this one right here is not a bad looking um, um, bird's nest fern the tornado version this one's for 1998 by um proven winners and you can see this is a philodendron green princess which i do find kind of hilarious just because um it doesn't look like a philodendron urubescence but um it is interesting that proven winners actually um names their plants and i mean they're 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 more than welcome to call their plants whatever i mean that's their plant but you can see here is a for 1998 this is a a trio star stromanti trio star, star i think and then over here we've got some more um Calatheas here. This is a Sweet Dreams Compact Star for 1998. This one is doing okay. I'm. It's on the verge of starting to have some yellow leaves, so it either needs some water or it's been watered with some hard water. That's the thing about you know watering plants like this. You know the Stermanthes, Nanthes, um, Calatheas, uh, Maranthas. They're a little bit more um, finicky, but this one right here is a gorgeous looking one as well. I really like the veining of the leaf and just having that green um tone around it with the purple undersides is really nice one philodendron i do want to buy eventually would be the philodendron sun red and why the reason why i want to buy a philodendron sun red this one's for 19.98 i i think it's a little bit pricey maybe i'll be able to find it for a cheaper price but it's because of the um the red um, new foliage it gets and then this is a philodendron birkin for 1998 i would say you could probably find better looking philodendron birkin than these these are really low variegated um, philodendron birkin um, i've seen some highly almost white leaves on philodendron birkin um, 
So it's one of those philodendrons that are super common now. And this is also another common um, philodendron. This is a philodendron lemon lime. I love it though because it does have that neon lime leaf um, that I tend to um, gravitate. So if it's, you know, two spectrums, right? I like the darker foliage leaves, like the purples, but I also like the yellows um, and neon colors of some of these plants. Then this is another cute looking um, Peperomia Golden for $5.98 by Proven Winners. What a nice looking Peperomia. I have one of those already. I got a larger um, version from HEB, which is a grocery store out in Texas for $6. So big box store plan shopping. Always compare your prices. It's always best to go window shopping. And if you wanna just utilize my videos, especially if you live in the um, Dallas-Fort Worth area, I typically try to give you guys um, plant pricing and just plant what types of plants are available in our market. Um, here is um, a better looking philodendron lemon lime right here. Now this particular philodendron needs a pole to grow up. It's got a natural inclination to grow up a pole and attach to it. It doesn't really have that mounding clumping style of philodendron growth. And you can see here, we've got some Monstera adansonii as well. These ones are large form or the wide form ones. Um, this isn't a perfect looking one. It does have some of the leaves trailing. And then here is a ficus elastica chloe. Um, so this is another hybrid or a specific um, cultivar that um, Proven Winners has. I like it because it's green and the leaves are a little bit rounder as compared to most rubber tree plants or ficus elastica. And you can see here even more plants. Here is another ficus elastica ruby, but um, Proven Winners calls this Belize for $19.98. Now this plant definitely needs a lot of light in order for it to have that red tone, that faint red tone on its leaves. And right next to it is a ficus elastica taniki, which um, most people would consider the most beautiful looking ficus um, elastica version out of all of the ficus elasticas. Um, I would agree too, just because of the high variegation, you can actually find higher variegated ficus el um, elastica tanikis. I am actually growing mine in full sun and it is doing well. And you can see right here, this is a Calathea freddy. And I actually like this Calathea freddy just because of just how how green it is and it doesn't really have like the purple undersides on the leaves sometimes I prefer calatheas just to be more green versus purple um, and you can see here what a go gorgeous looking ficus elastica taniki again this one is for $29.98 it is a little bit larger um, not a bad price at all but I feel like the best pricing for ficus elastica or rubber trees are um, Trader Joe's. So if you have a Trader Joe's grocery store, the chances of you finding a ficus elastica taniki for $12.98 is very profitable. And I like that, you know, we have options when we go plant shopping. And right over here is a fo um, Florida um, green. I like that as a lot. So look at how beautiful that is. This is just the green form, the original form as compared to the Florida Beauty, which is a variegated form. This one is for $29.98. I have one that I have desperately need to repot. I have literally um, neglected it. I probably water it once every three weeks and that is not okay because this plant needs more water than that. And then here is an Alocasia calculata. So um, a couple weeks back, maybe a month ago, I was able to find a sport variegated um, Alocasia calculata. You can see that this is clearly green, but the one I found, I found like two or three of them and I ended up buying two. The one I found actually had like yellowish Aurea, um, variegation so you know that's the thing about big box or plant shopping sometimes you get lucky and find some really cool looking plants this one is another alocasia that isn't looking too hot same thing with this so this is a little bit disappointing maybe all of the healthy looking alocasias have sold through because they had so many they had like racks and racks of them and now this is all that's left i will say this alocasia calculata for 29.98 is a healthy looking one look at how tall it's getting and I didn't realize that the growth pattern for the cacolata um, looked like this. I do have both of my variegated um, Alocasia cacolata, the sport variegated ones, growing outside. I am going to probably take all of my Alocasias outside to grow this season because I found that they get larger quickly and they just do better. But like, look at this one right here. I have this particular Alocasia as well.
well but i have neglected it so bad that some of the leaves got yellow so i don't know if there's some spider mites um the good thing about alocasia is if you do kill it typically you can reset it and grow it again from the corm so that's you know one saving grace about alocasia because they are a little bit more finicky but you can see here what a gorgeous looking alocasia cacolata um and then we have this right here i can't really pronounce this alocasia i do find it um beautiful and you can see there are two babies that you know some corms that actually sprouted I love the look of the leaves. You know, these narrow forms of this particular alocasia is really nice. And then the undersides, that purple underside is gorgeous. And speaking of gorgeous, Calathea or, um, orbifolia, really like that a lot. I unfortunately ended up killing mine just because I didn't um, water it enough. Um, it just ended up crisping. And at that point, you know, with Calatheas, once they start to really crisp, even when you rewater it, it just doesn't um, really perk up the plant again. So if I am going to get a Calathea orbifolia, I'm going to grow it in straight water because again, hydroponics is just really um, does well for me in terms of growing calatheas. And right over here is a philodendron red Congo, beautiful looking plant. I was able to see a variegated um, uh, philodendron green Congo at PlantCon 2024. And again, if you haven't already, check out my video of PlantCon 2024. You'll see a lot of variegated plants, some really uncommon and rare plants that just recently happened in Houston. And you can see here for 1998, this Vigoro um, hanging basket full of um, Epipremnum aria, Marble Queen Pothos, another classic house plant right here. Marble Queen Pothos, though, in order for it to remain um, variegated, you definitely have to give it enough um, bright indirect light. Otherwise, it starts to revert and get you more green, green um, color leaves. But you can see here another Epipremnum aria, Marble Queen Pothos. Like that a lot. I would say that the variegation on this one is okay some marble queen pothos are really highly variegated and some of them are considered snow queen pothos where literally the variegation is less creamy or yellowish it's more um straight white so for these are for 1998 and i do like po pothos plants because they are a really good beginner plant for anybody so i would say if you are gonna um grow plants and you are starting as a beginner, definitely get yourself a pothos plant, whether it's an Epipreno Aria Marble Queen pothos like that, or a Jade pothos or a Golden pothos. I do find this interesting that this is um, a Marble Queen pothos, which is mostly reverted, except there is one particular stem that almost has like white leaves. It's highly variegated. It'd be interesting to propagate those particular leaves to see if they would just um, continue to stay that white and you know that's the thing about certain plants just um, taking the certain traits of it and seeing if you can propagate it and continue to clone it but you can see here this is a scandapsis um, exotica love the large not the large yes love the large um, foliage leaves and the silvery tone as well but i do think this is interesting like wouldn't that be interesting to take a cutting and then propagate it and see if you could just get that high variegation to grow let me know in the comments plant foldies if that's even a possibility with pothos if they continue to push out more high variegation or if it's just one of those plants where it will just shoot out whatever variegation it wants to because you can see here these hanging baskets i wouldn't say are the he most healthy looking hanging baskets but again for 1998 that's not a bad price at all and then over here is the final part of the video that i just want to show you there's tons of proven winter plants now this is just another pepperoni um, or obtusifolia for 598 just a green form but look at how beautiful those leaves are and i love the fact that they're waxy and round and then here is another epipremnum arium marble queen pothos for 598 that's not a bad looking one as well that one has more yellowish um variegation and then over here we've got another proven winners plant this one is a philodendron red sun you can see the new leaves coming around they've got that um caramel looking color i like that a lot and then this one right here is a philod not a philodendron this is a calathea freddy another look um nice looking calathea now this one has a little bit of leaf damage it's got some yellowing going on and then over here we've got a 
um, Calathea Rospe Rospectica. I think that's how you pronounce it. Nice looking one as well. This is another plant that I am growing in high, um, in water, in hydroponics. And then over here, we've got a Treat Scanthia feeling flirty. Love the pink um, undertones on it. I ended up buying one for $5.98 instead of buying this for $19.98. Um, um, I, I feel like I would have saved more money doing that as well. And it's doing well for me. It's not a fast growing Treat Scanthia, surprisingly but it has more compact leaves and over here I did want to show you these h2o bowls so this is what I'm talking about hydroponics this is a dracaena bicolor and you can see that um, all of the roots are healthy whenever you're looking at roots if the roots are mostly white and thick and not brown and mushy then they are healthy plants and have healthy roots and you can see right here this is another dracaena um white jewel in a hydroponic situation so i am growing all of my calatheas this way in a bowl so i like that a lot and we've got some more hydroponic plants right over here so here is a high a um, rodeo oyster plant right here in hydroponics and you can see that there isn't that much um root system here and some of the roots are starting to darken so i wouldn't say this has the most healthy root system and then next to it is another um dracaena this is a dracaena janet um craig compacta very easy um plant to grow in a hydroponic situation which makes it even easier because all you have to do is just change the water periodically and this plant will thrive. It also can um, tolerate lower light conditions. And then we have a bunch of Haworthias right over here. Um, it is mentioned that these Haworthias can grow in lower light conditions. But when I think about Haworthias, I always think that Haworthias are plants that are similar to succulents and would need bright light. Like all of these succulent arrangements here. And I did want to show you this. Look at how um, much bloom this um, Calathe, I mean, this um, Kalanchoe is. I don't know the price for it, but what a beautiful looking Kalanchoe. The white blooms are absolutely stunning. So, plant folies, I hope you guys enjoyed my Home Depot um, plant shopping video today. I know I've been featuring a lot of lows, but I did want to um, actually go back and show you guys some Home Depot plants. You can see here, here is another beautiful bromeliad. Love that purple undertone that one is for $29.98 Home Depot is definitely a great place to go plant shopping if you are in the Dallas Fort Worth area I would recommend going to Prosper Texas and this is Richie again I hope to see you on the next video bye